So today we're going to talk about the nine things a man will do that will break your heart. These are not, wait, am I doing that right? Nine things, yeah. Now, really quickly, before we get started with this broadcast, I just want you to know that I read an article. I apologize. I wrote down, it took notes, but I forgot what where the article was about behaviors you should let go of when you're over 40 years old. So the following represent behaviors every person should let go of, but more importantly, these are the behaviors that will most likely sabotage your relationship. And whether you're a man or woman, even though the title says these nine things men will do that will break your heart, this is true for men and women alike. Now, before we dive into this, I want to address the elephant in the room. I want to address the elephant in the room, and that is most of us dating coaches or relationship coaches will tell you the behaviors you should avoid so you can dump somebody, right? Uh, and sometimes we even, like what I'm going to be sharing with you today, I'm going to be telling you behaviors you should pay attention to dump someone. But the elephant in this, the room is how many of us dating coaches truly know how to help you pick the right person before you ever go on a date with the wrong guy. Like, like does, do any of us coaches tell you what to do, how to pick the person before you ever go on a date with the wrong guy? Most of us are telling you what to observe in the first six weeks of dating or the first 90 days of dating, but none of us give you the formula. And I wanna read you a post that I shared today and see if this resonates with you. And then I'll get into these nine things in just a moment. So my post on Instagram said, um, it actually, the, the, the meme said, emotionally unavailable people do not become emotionally available just because you stayed and loved them. That was what the meme said. And my post said the following, have you ever experienced someone in the lust or limerence phase? They can, they can be very expressive, but their feelings once bountiful come to a crawl shortly thereafter. One of the reasons why I advocate for almost every for for almost interviewing a person in the early stages is because it gets them out of their body, out of their body and into their head. While logic isn't necessarily a pathway to the heart, it slows the process, allowing one to get to their heart and hopefully choose from that place. The challenge for too many people is that their heart is frozen or blocked, giving them and giving them all in love in the world will not heal them. There is this misconception that the more love you give a person, the more they will love you back. However, a wounded soul needs healing and healing begins when one says, I've had enough living an unfulfilled life from the perspective of the heart. Okay, why am I sharing this with you? Because I'm gonna share it with you some nine things that, you know, that will break your heart in a moment. And I think this would be rather obvious, but you can actually do something before you ever go on a first date with someone and my invitation for you is to interview, but let's go even further and interrogate the person. Okay, now I'm saying this a little tongue in cheek. However, some well-placed questions before you ever meet someone could help prepare you to avoid the wrong person. And by the way, there's a link below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. My area of expertise is teaching women and men discernment. And that means asking a few well-placed questions based on your personality so you can avoid finding yourself in what every dating coach tells you to do is avoid these types of people. And as soon as I share this with you, you're gonna go, well, duh, Jonathan, that's just common sense. And yet, if this was such common sense, why are humans, and I'm guilty of what I'm about to share, I am guilty of this. Why are we humans believe that chemistry equals relationship success? In fact, chemistry can whitewash or take green, red flags and paint them green. And I'm guilty of this, folks. I'm not here to profess that I'm the best at this, okay? I'm as dysfunctional as the next human being out there. I will never tell you that I'm here sharing from some space of you know, divine expertise. I'm literally sharing with you what I've observed 
both as a coach and as both a human being out in the dating marketplace. Now, I would originally was going to title this nine things you shouldn't accept from a man before sleeping with him or af excuse me, after sleeping with him, because I'm here to espouse that sex should be sacred. That's right. I have a very Puritan point of view and I've been a pig. I've been a dog. So believe me, this is this is hard for me because the biological desire to be physically intimate with someone is incredibly strong. And there's an old saying, men are the gas, you ladies are the brakes. It is incumbent upon you and to initially slow the process down so you can get to know this person. Dating is an experience of data collection. It's not about attraction and romance. Yes, we all love the idea of being romance, but let's face it, romance leads to bad choices because we can take red flags and paint them green. The minute that, bio, that chemical cocktail starts searing through our bodies, that says, I want to be physically intimate with this person. We have to operate from our logical side. And I know that isn't romantic because the reality is, folks, most men and women, I, I read that blog to you, most men and women have a frozen or wounded heart. You ladies are no picnic either. You guys, just because you will, will enter into commitment more so than men, doesn't make you any better at the capacity of giving and receiving love. Many times women chase love with broken men. Typically the broken man tends to be the emotionally constipated man, the emotionally unavailable man, the fearful avoidant or dismissive avoidant because the anxious man is chasing love and he chooses the avoidant woman. <laughs> and if you're not familiar with what I'm sharing with you, I highly recommend reading, I highly recommend reading two books, Wired for Love by Dr. Stan Tatkin and Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller. But if you're watching this right now, just go back and re replay this. There's a link below to Jonathan Recommends Books in the show notes. Jo and there's take you a PDF of all the books I recommend. Why do you need to understand this? Because we oftentimes get attached to the wrong person. And then these nine behaviors, we will absolutely whitewash them. We will paint these red flags green. And believe me, I am guilty of this. So. Ladies, before the penis goes inside the vagina, I highly recommend reading all the books I've listed below so you can prepare yourself to be in your logical mind instead of your body because ultimately we want to merge the mind with the body so you can connect with your heart, with your divine self. And if you wanna read an amazing book to learn how to connect with your heart, I highly recommend reading this book, The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. And then I wanna re remind you to read this book. Oh my God, this is an amazing book called Return to Love by Marianne Williamson. Oh my gosh, this will help you connect to your heart in a way that you never experienced before. These aren't dating books. These are books to prepare you for what I hope to achieve in my own life is a soul connection. Okay, the nine things to look for. Number one is a man who's inflexible. Or by the way, a woman who's inflexible. You know what? Um, I've noticed that there are a lot of human beings as they get into midlife, 40, 50, 60, even 70 years old, they're rather rigid. They have their way of doing things. It's kind of my way or the highway. I've witnessed this with women and I've witnessed this with men. You guys are fucking, human beings are rather stubborn as they get older and they can be rather inflexible. I will tell you, the behavior everybody should let go of in midlife is inflexibility. This is the time to be incredibly flexible. This is the time to try new things. This is the time to explore and not be rigid in one's life but many of you have such grooved lives. Whether it is you're taking care of your children, whether it's your workout routine, whether it's your professional life, just to name a few, or your friends, some of you are so inflexible that it makes it difficult to do this. 
And I'm speaking of men as well as women, as well as men doing their golf and men doing their guys' nights and things like that. If you want to be in a healthy, happy relationship, you have to learn to be flexible because otherwise, inflexibility causes rigidity. Okay? Number two, if a man doesn't listen to you, you know, one of the most painful experiences in relationship and someone doesn't sincerely listen to you. They but worse is when they're only talking, they're only communicating to respond. You know, healthy two-way communication requires active listening. Where's my book? Um, um, oh God, it's the uh, Dale Carnegie book. Uh, where is that book? It's somewhere here. Uh, How to Win and Influence Friends. You know, oh, here it is. You know, one of the things that's talked about is learning the, the importance of active listening. So if you're a guy listening to this broadcast right now, I highly recommend you learn how to listen. Now, listening includes acknowledging the person's, acknowledging the person for what they've said. Validate what they said is true for them. And understand that the two of you could have different points of view, especially when there's friction. Acknowledging what they said, validating what they said is true for them, and recognizing what's true for them may be different. It's okay to disagree, but if you're not actively listening, if you're only listening to respond, you're on the way of preparing to, to end or to sabotage a relationship. In fact, there's another book I want you to read. It's called I Hear You, The Surprisingly Simple Skills Behind Extraordinary Relationships. Michael Sorensen. Jonathan, all you do is recommending book after book after book. Well, there is so much knowledge in these books and you can watch these YouTube videos on every one I've just shared here today. You can start listening to podcasts to improve who you are as a person. My, my whole premise as a coach, listen, I don't know what to text a guy back. Well, actually, I do know what to text a guy back if he texts you certain thing, but I don't teach that kind of bullshit stuff. I don't get into the granular stuff. I'm more here to encourage how to become a sovereign human being, how to become an empowered human being, how to become a human being who genuinely bump, 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 loves themselves. And by the way, this is my book called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help and Spiritual Work. <laughs> Under Look, look for selflovethebook.com. Highly recommend. And again, my book is a beginner version. Number three, being judgmental. Oh my God, is that a relationship killer? If you are with somebody who is habitually judgmental, then there's a good chance that this person will break your heart. You know, humans that don't have compassion for other human beings oftentimes make miserable partners to be with. By the way, complainers make miserable partners too. Have you ever been with, I'm going off subject here, but have you ever been with a guy who's a complainer? Oh my God. Or a woman who's a complainer? It is just fucking annoying. And I'm not talking about Jewish complaining. <laughs> I have a lot of friends who are Jewish and they call it Jewish complaining. I'm talking about people that just incessantly have judgments or complain about others. It's just effing annoying. And I believe that person that has, you know, being overly judgmental will most likely break your heart. Number four, holding on to grudges. You know, actually, now that I think about it, women hold on to grudges a lot in relationships. I've just noticed that. I know men do this too, but I find women do this a lot. Like you hold it against us. I can't stand people. Look, if I've done something wrong or he's done something wrong, or excuse me, if, if she's done something wrong and you've forgiven the person, then you got to let it fucking go. Judgments are an absolute annoyance. When people act, uh, or excuse me, hold grudges, excuse me. Number five, being overly critical. It's kind of piggybacks on when I was talking about complainers, but people that are overly critical. Oh my gosh. I remember once years ago, I, I was in a relationship with a woman and she corrected my speech a number of times. Look, 
I don't know how many people know how hard it is to get in front of camera right here and be incredibly articulate. I mean, if you've ever watched a movie, just remember, actors and actresses have people writing their scripts for them. I'm not writing a script. This is just absolutely stream of consciousness. But people who are overly critical, whether it's a man or woman, oh my God, it's so annoying to be with someone who corrects you for God forbid for being human. You know, that should that just shit should just be let go. Number six, neglecting self-care. Do you know how many guys? I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, but you, the guys listening to this, so many of you have let yourself go. In fact, women, you too as well. I mean, I'm gonna say neglecting self-care. People that don't take good care of themselves, not only their they're um, just their outward uh, from an appearance perspective, but also from a, a health perspective. You know, self-care isn't just about manicures and pedicures or haircuts or dressing nice. It's about taking care of your body because when you get to midlife, the days in front of you most likely are shorter than the days behind you. And self-care, if somebody doesn't take care of themselves, they will effectively put themselves in a position that will cause you to it's for cause them to end the relationship and break your heart. Number seven. Oh, this one is so fucking big. Avoiding apologies. Oh my God, we are swimming in a sea of power, power like righteousness. When two people have difference of opinions, I'm right. No, I'm right. No, I'm right. No, I'm right. No, I'm right. You know, the power of an apology. And first, you have to recognize that if you've genuinely done something to, let's just say, hurt someone's feelings, is to own the fucking thing. Jonathan, you're just cursing. That's so unprofessional of you. I'm sorry for those people that bring that up. I just laugh, okay? I get it. I'm unprofessional to you. But I'm not here to make you happy. I'm here to give you perspective. And from apology perspective, first is acknowledging that you did something wrong and taking ownership and having a bit regret and then making changes. But if you avoid apologies, and I know we've talked about narcissists habitually can never apologize for what they've done because they've always right. And yes, it fucking sucks to be with a person who gaslights you when they genuinely have done something. And I can't say, you know, I'm not a big fan of when people say, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. That's not taking ownership. That's just saying you're acknowledging how it was hurt. But, you know, I, I really, I've noticed this. This is a subtle thing, you know, um, avoidance do. Avoidance rarely take ownership that they could have done something that caused it and say, oh, I could do better next time. Just an observation I have. Okay, avoiding apologies, number seven. Number eight, being dismissive. Oh my God. This comes back to being, you know, not taking ownership, being overly critical, being dismissive of someone, I think is the cruelest thing. And it'll, and it'll effectively break your heart to be with someone who is dismissive to you. And number nine, let me tell you something, folks. I believe the biggest challenge today in relationships is so few humans do personal development, self-help, and spiritual work, which I believe is an absolute necessity for the building blocks to a healthy, happy relationship, to read the many books I've talked about. This book, by the way, even though the title says Seven Principles for Making a Marriage Work by John Gottman, take out the word marriage and just replace it with relationship. Folks, before the penis goes inside the vagina on a regular basis, that you guys should be reading this book together. If Listen, I said this in the beginning of the broadcast, sex should be sacred. It should be reserved for people who are exploring a relationship. And if you're going to begin the beginning stages of getting to know someone, then establish what the fuck are we doing together? Why are we doing this? Is it just companionship, connection, and sex? Or is there something more sacred here? And I scream at the top of my lungs because I'm shaking, I'm shaking everyone up <laughs> to start approaching the process a lot differently. Because as I said in the beginning, the elephant in the room is 
We can, we dating coaches and relationship coaches can tell you all day long who to break up with. But if we were really doing our job, we could help you pick that person right from the get go. And I'd like to think I've got a better handle on it because I believe in interrogating people early in the process. <laughs> I say that a little tongue in cheek, but there's a little bit of truth to it. Anyway, those are the nine things a man will do that will most likely break your heart. And by the way, whether it's a man or woman, human beings should let these things go. These are areas in your life that everyone can improve upon. And I guarantee if you do the work, you might find that you'll attract a juicy, delicious, healthy, happy relationship in your life. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. If it is, post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. And if it does resonate with you, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos as well.